Okay, so let's just back up for a second here. So at this point, we have looked at the extract stage, and we have seen how to do a simple extract, and we have done our table definitions for both the CSV file and for DB2, which means that we also, right after that, tested our load stage. So what we need to do now is look at the transform stage. And I've mentioned this before, but just to reiterate, although I'm calling it the transform stage, there it could be any, really, of these processing stages. One of the processing stages happens to be called transform. And transform, actually transformer, and transformer is in fact probably the most powerful of all of the processing stages. And it's in fact what we're going to use now. But again, it could be any of these. So the first thing we need to do here is we need, first of all, we need to drag the transformer onto the canvas. And then secondly, we need to get its link, which it's not its link, but CSV's link to connect into the transformer. So I'm just going to drag it away from DB2 and onto the transformer. And then I'm going to move the transformer up between the two, and I'm going to move DB2 over. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space. And then we need to write, uh, we need to now connect DB2 into the mix. And so I'm just going to right drag from transformer over to DB2. And then I'm going to rename this to something like transformer and we've already got this so we're going to rename it now because it's no longer in db2 it's into the transformer and then same thing with ds link that's not very meaningful so let's call it in db2 and now we need to do a transform okay so we know from before that this is our employees file first name surname and employee id now during the ki during a transform, what we need to do is first, and this is the case for all transforms, you need to obviously know your database well enough to figure out which tables are related to which tables and how you can make joins. And the reason for this is because the overall purpose of a transform is to get all the columns that you need ready and waiting here in the transform. And if you just bring in one table, obviously you're just going to have the fields from one table. But if you join the tables, now you have the ability to put all of these columns and these columns together into one transform. I'm going to call it a table, but really it's a stage in the transform stage. And the reason for that is because, remember, we're doing an ETL. These are all of the entities. We're extracting them out, and then we're going to do something to them. That's transform. And once they're here, they're effectively staged. All, all of what we have, you could be all of these columns, or it could just be a subset of these columns. They're all sitting here waiting, all these rows, so that we can plug in whatever we want into the database. And it's much easier to do a join and bring them all in to the transform stage and pick and choose what we want so that we can put them into the database. So you don't want to do joins here, in other words. The, the point is you're trying to do joins here. Now, that's the overall idea. The, po the purpose of the transform stage is to get the correct columns, either all or some of them, and put them here so that you can load them into the database. Another way to think about this is that uh, very often you will start out with your CSV file, and then you will augment that CSV file with a given column. Say, for example, you want this column in addition to what your original CSV said. Well, that's not. this is not in your CSV, right? It's in the party table, but you let's say you need it. So you are going to add it, essentially, here into the transform. And once you have done that, you essentially have this. You've got your original, let's say, three columns, one, two, three, and now you've got a fourth column. But maybe you need a column here, and you need a column from in here. So you're essentially doing add this column, add this column, add this column, add this column. So you're not doing any joins of this here. You've got all of your data that you can pick and choose. So let's say you need, in your database, let's say you need this, and you need this. But let's say maybe this is a var car, and it's not got enough uh, maybe it's 255, but your database doesn't use var card 255. Maybe it uses, uh, I don't know, 15. And so you need to transform it at this stage prior to loading it into your database. And that's another reason to have transform. So let's look at an actual sort of practical problem that you're going to run into in exactly this scenario. So if you look at the party table, you 
we know about the party ID. This is the surrogate key. We already talked a bit about it. And your CSV's primary key, 1424 here, well, the employee ID, and this example, 1424, that is going to be placed in registered number. Okay, but what about the name, right? Where, where in my party table would I put John Smith? Well, y you can't, right? That y there's no place to put it because that is in the text column of party name, which means that if you want to put John Smith into the text column, and what I mean is at, at the point where you're doing the loading into the database, you're going to load data, insert data into party name, you, you're not going to be able to do that immediately. You need to transform it first. In other words, you need to, let me clean this up, you need to do this, concatenate John, which is the first name, along with Smith, into a single column because this is a single column in your database and in order to do that that concatenation step you're going to do that in the transform stage so this actually causes a new problem so let's assume you've already gone through this step you've concatenated John and Smith all the first and last names together you have this new column in your transform and now you want to just start loading, right? So we've done the extraction, we've done the transformation, now we want to load into party name by insert, 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 insert with all of these CSV values. Okay, well, imagine you did that. Where are you going to get party ID? And the answer is you don't know because there you need to first insert into party. These, remember, are generated values from DB2. So you very you can't go directly into the party name table. You first need to do your loading. Let me clean this up. You first need to do all of your loading into the party table. So you're going to have to start with your employee ID and add that, do an insert there, add, adding the registered number. And we actually did this uh, a couple of videos ago. So that is the starting place. Once you have that, say you've got you know, five different party IDs, party entries, party records, party rows. Now you can find the party ID that John got. So if he's the very first person that you've entered into your database, his party ID will be one. And now what we want to do is add his party ID, that one, aggregated essentially, to what we already know. So we have John Smith. So let me, let's make this very clear. So we have John, we have Smith, we have 1424. So what we really want to do is kind of transfer these over, add them to the transform stage. And now we want to add one because we know that John Smith was inserted into party and had a party ID of one. And we want to continue that along with all of these. So in other words, what we're doing is we're adding a column. We're adding columns to transform. So what we did was we took John and that became one column. We took Smith, and that became another column. And then we took 1424, and that became another column. And then, most importantly here, we took party ID, and that became a new column. And no data in any of this is represented in any one place. Nowhere is this four tuple of four values represented in any single place, and except that we want to do that essentially in transform. Now what we're going to see is that actually, although that is what we want to do, what we also want to do is have a f another column, which is John Space Smith. And that is because, look at party underscore name. We know from before that party underscore name is one text is a single column and so we know what that has the name in it so we need to have a single column representing this single column and so our transform you can see what this is what i was talking about before transform is essentially just adding lots of columns so that when we're ready to do loading we can choose whatever we need and at the point where we need to insert party all we really needed was 1424 so we're, we're ready to do a whole bunch of loads into party. But at the point, once we're done with that, so that's like job one. Now job two is to load into party name. Well, in that case, now we, again, we're going to, we, we need to choose some 
parts of transform from our transform stage. And in this case, we mostly need John Smith because that's going to be text. But we also need, as we had said before, we need that party ID, which we got from our first load. So there, this is the party ID. So this is the idea, again, behind transform. You need to essentially keep aggregating data into it so that when you go to your load stage, you've got all the pieces you need essentially in a single row.